Hello, I'm Jason with MathTutorDVD.com, and uh, here we're going to talk about what I think is one of the really, really neatest things about this calculator, and that's the way that it handles fractions. Uh, everyone here in the beginning has problems with fractions and, and learning how to work with them, and with practice you get better, but um, the way this calculator handles fractions really makes it absolutely bulletproof for anyone to get the right answer uh, and to check your work. So the, the, the main thing to note is uh, that anytime you do division in this calculator with the division symbol here, like you know 7 divided by 8, most calculators would go ahead and put a decimal as the answer and go ahead and do this division. But the TI-89 is basically going to keep it as a fraction. So when you, when you pull it out of the box, the first thing you do is you start doing basic calculations. And the first thing a student does usually is try to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. When you start doing division, you know, even simple things like 5 divided by 5, well, in that case, it's an exact answer. But if you do something else, like you know, five divided by uh, uh, ten, uh, it's going to leave the answer in terms of a fraction, and that's really frustrating. Four fifths, for instance, you just put the input four fifths, and it sticks four fifths out. And so, if you don't know what the calculator is trying to do, it's a little bit of a mystery. And so, basically, if you go here into the mode menu. And we've talked about this a little bit before, but if you go on page two, you'll see that in the exact approximate, we're in automatic mode. And what that means is that any calculation that I do here, if it's, uh, if it's a, a fraction that it can simplify, it will try to simplify the fraction, but it's generally going to leave all fractions as fractions because that's a more exact representation of what you put in. It's not going to do the long division and put it into decimals unless you tell it to. So that's the way it, it defaults, and uh, you can override that in the mode menu, and I'll show you how to do that here in a second. But it's very, very powerful because, for instance, let's go and, and, and say, what if we, uh, you know, if you're doing really basic algebra, let's say you were doing something like uh, you forgot how to simplify the fraction 16 64ths, right? Uh, so let me go back and make this 64. So if you put 16 divided by 64 in a normal calculator, it'll do the division and it'll put a decimal out there. But in the TI-89, this is a fraction, and if you put it on there, it's basically going to try to simplify that fraction, and it's going to simplify it to one-fourth. And you don't have to really tell it to do that. It's just automatically going to, to simplify fractions. All right, now, if you get an answer as a fraction like we have here, and you decide, okay, I don't want to really look at the fraction representation. I really want to know what the decimal is. My recommendation to you is just to go and hit the green button here. You don't have to do anything other than the fact that you do a calculation, you see a fraction as a result, hit the green button and hit the squiggly equal sign, which means approximation, approximately equal to, and then it will simply do the same calculation again, but it will give you the decimal equivalent of it. So you really have the best of both worlds. You can work with fractions, and the calculator will do all the heavy lifting on the common denominators and everything, and the simplifications. Um, but if you do want to see the decimal, you can. So, you know, another very simple one, um, you know, 5 divided by 10. We all know that 5 tenths is the same as 1 half. It's a very simple thing. The calculator can do that uh, as well. And if you want to know what the decimal representation, just hit this green squiggly equals and it'll tell you that's 0.5. It's exactly what we want. Now most of the time you're not going to be just putting fractions into this calculator to see how they are reduced, but you might add or subtract fractions quite a bit. What if you wanted to take uh, 1 half uh, and add it to uh, 1 half? And so we're just doing a simple thing that, I'm, that you know the answer to. That's why I'm doing it here. So the calculator is going to add these things together and it's going to arrive at the value of 1, and it's done all of the heavy lifting behind the scenes. It's added the numerators together to get 2 over 2, and then it simplifies 2 over 2 to get a value of 1. What if you have uh, 1 fourth plus 1 fourth? The calculator is going to add them together and get 2 fourths, but it's not going to stop there. It's going to take 2 fourths, and it's going to simplify that and, to, and give you 1 half. So it's extremely pop, uh, powerful if you've got, you know, one eighth uh, plus one sixth plus one half. You know, even even for me by hand, it would take me a little bit of time to get the common denominator necessary so that I have everything in a common denominator, and uh, then add the numerators, get the fraction, and then simplify the fraction. But with the TI-89, you just put it in there, and it's going to tell you that that's 19 24ths. The common denominator was 24. 
uh, and uh, you know you can just go ahead and you can go ahead and, uh, and figure that out by hand, no problem. But the TI-89 does it all seamlessly, and, and if you want to know what the decimal equivalent is, you just hit this guy down here, and then you can get the decimal equivalent as well. It's extremely powerful, and that's just basic addition. What if you're doing something more complicated? What if you have uh, one point, uh, actually let me get rid of this decimal here. What if you have uh, one half uh, minus one fourth, right? And then you're gonna um, you're going to say plus, uh, uh, let's do, one third, uh, and then let's multiply that by four thirds. Okay, and it's going to, you see how it evaluates the fraction here, it's, it's not quite what I intended. You've got the one half minus the one fourth plus, and then on the, on the numerator here, it treats the ones divided by three times four as the numerator of this other fraction. If I wanted to go and make it a little bit clearer, what I was really trying to do is uh, something like something like if I want to add a few more parentheses just to make it explicit I could put a parenthesis here and I can say this is one-third uh, multiplied by this guy right here so with the parentheses in place it's clear that what I'm trying to do is take one-third fraction and multiply it by four-thirds the fraction and that's all in there and of course you're going to get basically the same thing as a result but I'm a little bit more explicit in what I'm doing so it's doing all of this fraction arithmetic behind the scenes and if you want to know what 2536 is you just hit the squiggly equal sign and then you get your decimal equivalent back so uh, it works with all of the guys here now one more thing I do want to tell you if you get a fraction answer uh, let's pick something simple 0.75 and you want to convert that back to a fraction. Maybe you're doing a long calculation, you get a decimal as a result, and you want to see what fraction that's equal to. The calculator can do that as well. The easiest way to pull that off is to go into the, um, the math menu, second function math, and go into the number menu, the flyout, and hit the exact, this first one here, number one. So you can hit either number one, because of the number one here or you can just hit enter so let's hit enter so you have exact 0.75 and close it off and it'll tell you that 0.75 is three quarters so you can use the built-in functions of the calculator to keep everything in fractional form um, and then get a fractional answer that's simplified uh, and then you can also turn around and take any decimal that you get and if it's possible to convert that decimal to a fraction then it'll do that now if you put something crazy in here, 0.7587, uh, then it might just give you something like 7587 over 10,000 because that's the exact representation here. That's about the, the best you can do. But with common fractions like, uh, you know, uh, if you get 0 0.2 and you forget what fraction that is and it could convert that to one-fifth for you. Um, if you're going to use mixed fractions in any kind of calculation, uh, let's say you have the fraction uh, one and three quarters. Well, don't forget what one and three one and three quarters really is. Um, one and three quarters is the same thing as saying one plus three quarters. That's one and three quarters. Uh, so if you do this, you're going to get, uh, it's going to convert that again to a regular uh, improper fraction for you of seven fourths. So if you're going to take one and three quarters, let's say, as a fraction, and you were going to add it to, let's open up another one, two and four fifths. So this could be a, a fraction problem that you might have to work out one and three quarters plus two and four fifths. Then it'll do all the heavy lifting and figure out that the fraction that you care about is nine, 91, 20. Now, if you want to convert this back to a, to a mixed fraction, you'll have to do that on your own, but at least you can get down to the, to the basic answer. And if you want to know what the decimal equivalent is, you just hit the squiggly enter down here and there you go. One more thing I want to show you, and I did cover this in the section on the mode menu, but I want to show you the mode menu real quick one more time. Page two. All of this stuff with fractions is happening because we're in automatic mode. You have a choice of auto, exact, or approximate. If I put the calculator in approximate mode, then it's going to behave like a regular calculator. Four fifths is going to return a decimal. Um, eight ninths is going to return a decimal. So if you take one half uh, plus three quarters, then you're going to get decimals everywhere and you're going to get 1.25. But if you go back into the mode menu to page two, and we're in approximate right now, and if you go to the exact mode, it's going to force the calculator 
to treat this and keep an exact answer for you. And so you're going to get a fraction back. So the bottom line is when you're in exact mode, all of basically all of the results are going to be represented as, as fractions because they're exact. Um, if they can be. When, they're, when you have it in an approximate mode, everything's going to behave like a regular calculator with decimals. When you're in auto mode, the calculator is going to choose what to do. If it can represent it as a fraction, it will. If it can't, then it's just going to put it as a decimal. Um, and if you have a decimal uh, that you want to convert back to a fraction, you can always go in the math menu to the number menu to, and hit this exact guy and put, uh, you know, uh, 0 0.7 and it'll tell you what fraction that is, 7 tenths. Uh, it's a very, very powerful feature of the calculator. You'll use it constantly because you're always dealing with fractions and it can really help you, you know, speed up your execution of things, you know, and, and, and give you practice with, with adding and subtracting fractions and make sure that you're getting your common denominators right. I'm Jason. Uh, if I were you, I'd recommend leaving it in auto mode. That works fine. There's no reason not to. If you want to take a fraction and convert it to a decimal, you have a button right here that does it for you. Um, and uh, at first it's a little bit off-putting, but after you get used to it, you'll realize how really, really cool it is that the calculator does that. And you can even do crazy things, like what if you wanted to have, you know, I call it crazy, but you know, four-fifths, and what if you want to raise that fraction four-fifths to the power of, you know, three? Uh, well, you can do that. You know how to do that with the rules of algebra, and the calculator, it does it all, and then it simplifies the fraction for you, so 64, 125, and if you want to know what decimal that is, you just hit this guy down here. Very, very, very powerful feature. Um, use it and get comfortable with it. It'll help you out on your tests.